Okay, guys, today at Blues Band Vintage, we have a really interesting uh, guitar that came in. Back in the 70s, when Gibson would, would produce a guitar that didn't necessarily pass inspection, they would stamp it with a second stamp on the back of the headstock and sell it at a discounted rate. Um, they stopped doing that because too many of those were getting out of the marketplace. So in the 80s and 90s, they would run these, and, and even up till now, they would run these particular guitars through a bandsaw and cut them into pieces and throw them in a dumpster. Well, in, in the early 90s, a lot of those guitars were being pulled back out of the dumpsters by employees on lunch break or employees after hours, and they were being taken home and glued back together. And, and played as guitars. And so we, we now know those to be called uh, dumpster Les Pauls. And we see those occasionally. We used to see them quite a bit in Nashville, but they don't pop up too much anymore. Well, we had a guitar come in this week for a refinish. It was a Les Paul studio from the early 90s, 92 serial number. Um, and it had been refinished poorly at some point during its life. And so we were gonna be stripping it off and respraying it. Upon inspecting the guitar, something just didn't seem right because in the finish, we started seeing where the arm wears and the typical wear patterns were around the edges, we saw white poking out from underneath. So it looked like there might have been binding on this guitar at one point. However, the Les Paul Studio model doesn't typically have binding. Um, then I got to looking and there was binding kind of poking out on the backside as well. So we thought, well, that it would have been a Les Paul Custom, which is the only you know Les Paul that had binding on the front and back, um, but it didn't have Les Paul Custom headstock inlays or anything like that, so we were, we were just kind of confused by this guitar. So when we stripped the finish off, this is what we actually found. This guitar started its life as a Les Paul Custom, which has a five-ply binding that surrounds the entire perimeter on front and back, up until this point here at which point you can see this seam where this guitar has been cut from a bandsaw. And this section here is all from a Les Paul Standard, which has single ply binding. And on the back has no binding at all, except there's Les Paul Custom binding around here. So we said, oh my gosh, this is a Les Paul Custom paired with a, with a Les Paul Standard. But that doesn't explain the neck not having the Les Paul Custom inlays. So we started looking here because the neck on a Custom would have had a parallelogram inlay. This headstock is from yet another Les Paul that's been grafted in very well, I might add. I mean, they did splines and it was a, it was a really good joint um, underneath the finish. And then we found one more really, really bizarre thing was right here as, as they were piecing this thing together this piece that's been just kind of placed in there as a filler piece is not even turned in the right direction. The maple cap runs the wrong way and things. This guitar is built up of at very least three different Les Pauls, possibly four, because we have a custom body, a standard body. We know this came from a studio because it has no other uh, actually, no, this would have come from a standard. I, I am corrective because it has a pearl inlay. This is from a standard. It just doesn't have the screen print. But this neck would have been from a studio because it has parallelograms and no binding. So we have custom, standard, standard, studio. And God only knows. So this guy, we're going to call it the Franken Paul literally is made up of at least four different guitars and the work was done quite well actually um which leads me to to beg the question if you have the skill sets to do this type of work why didn't you just build your own guitar there you go a dumpster les ball if you want to see more of what we do Check us out here at bluesmanvintage.com.